Okay, we're back. 2024. Been asked a simple question. How can you lose and win? You know, how can you lose all these games and expect to win? It doesn't make any sense. It makes sense to me because this is what I've been doing for years. So the practice that we do within our answer process, we have to understand how it is that we lose and then we then evaluate how we lose and then we actually take action on why we lost. We don't just do a glib sort of, let's have a look at the review after the game, oh yes, yes, and then don't take any action. We actively take action on all of the games that we um, that we play, basically. Even the ones that we win, we then analyze, we go through, we'll take moments throughout the week, to be moments that you won't see, yeah, to really look through the games with a fine tooth comb and see if there's any areas for improvement. So as mentioned before we came into 2024, we were looking at the carnage aspect. So just going in there and just playing games, taking loads of losses. The majority of those games now, I have almost got myself up to date with the evaluation of those games. And it's really quite impressive. We're not looking to add any other concepts or ideas or anything like that. We're just basically looking at how it is we can work with our own personal answer to chess using these games that we have just recently played. I think there must be quite a lot. <laughs> I didn't actually count them. I'm going to have to go back in and count them. And um, really... We'll go through a few of them just to say, you know, just to show you what we actually do. There, right. So this was the start of the process. So we'll take a look at this first one here. It's a 10 minute game, so it's just the rapid ones I'm focusing on. And as we've mentioned before, oh, I, don't, I can't, I didn't jump back out of this now. Um, 1885 was our peak on the rapid. And we decided to then go in and just do complete carnage. And when it's not, like we say, it's not like sandbagging or smurfing or anything like that. We're just going in there and just having a look and see how we perform against the strongest site in the world. And totally relaxed and steady and seeing how they actually win. So let's go with this first one here. And we played as white. Do, do, do. Okay, so this uh, was 1797, so it might have been previous, but I've, we're starting from here. I remember that, Lulu. Okay, so they pushed through the center, tapped the pawn, and then we grabbed. I'm not sure if I want the evaluation thing on at the moment. So, yeah, when you're doing your evaluation, obviously, most of you will know, um, you should kind of try and do it without the evaluation bar and all that sort of stuff and just see if you can find a better move for yourself. I hope it doesn't come up with any prompts or anything. Let's... And it's stopped because we've changed that. Yeah. Okay, so we blocked through the center. Can't see a problem with that at the moment. And they brought the bishop through. We brought our bishop through. And then we brought the queen up and basically looking to see if we can put some pressure towards the knight. But real, real, in reality, the bishop is protecting and the queen is protecting as well. It usually works better if the bishop is somewhere long gone, maybe taking the pot, you know, come down here and it's been taken off the board. Um, and then basically when you castle, then you get your rook behind. So then you're basically putting pressure on that knight so the king can't go and castle. But because the bishop is already here, really, I don't think the queen move should have been done, in my head anyway. I don't think it should have been done. I think it's kind of a waste of a tempo. So I think maybe just either bringing the bishop out or just bringing the bishop here, developing the knight, attacking the pawn or something like that, probably would have um, sufficed or most definitely just going and castling. So instantly, from looking at this game here, I've already, and it's only, what is it, what move are we on? It's only move five. And we've already seen a difference in the way that we would approach the game um, if we were playing it again. 
So that's the type of evaluation that I like to do, really breaking it down, really looking at it and saying, well, is it really worth going for that queen there? When the position isn't the ideal position that you like, as we mentioned. So to me, I feel like I've wasted a bit of a tempo doing that queen move. So the knight comes out and then we castled. As I've mentioned, it's like looking at this idea of putting pressure onto here. But now they've brought the knight out as well and that's protecting the knight as well. So it's got a lot of pieces defending that knight already. They bring the um, bishop out attacking, so we attack the bishop and then they, we capture. And that gives up the pawn that is protected by the knight. So attacking the bishop, wrong tempo, wrong move order. So simple terms, a simple pawn move like this would have sufficed in my head because he's supporting the pawn. You know they potentially can take and even if the pawn takes they're still not going to protect the pawn here so very simple maneuvers that should have been taking place during this game but we attack the um, bishop and this pawn is going to fall as it did in the game so that's the starter for 10 for um negative movements that i've made in this game i have to own all of this but I know full well, going forward, throughout the rest of this year, these are the types of things we want to try and avoid. Constantly trying to drive forward better positions. Looking at these games is really so beneficial for me. It's better than looking at other people's games and um, looking at the areas to pick up on. This is quite easily rectified but it's such fun looking at the breakdown of every move that you're making and understanding why. You have to really be truly critical of your, your own play and I just love it. It does enhance what you do for your future games. So the queen moves out now, it's looking to attack a pawn here, but really it's not a good position. It's attacking the knight as well. It's trying to be a bit sly, but it's overworking the queen already. Bishop's looking to try and get into the squeeze here. Knight to potentially at some point looking to get out, but it looks a bit slow. Look how many pieces they've actually got developed. They've got a knight, they've got a bishop, they've got a knight. All ready and ready to go, whereas I'm dancing with my queen. So the knight moves out of the way, still developed, still in a nice position, and it's also defending the pawn as well. So we've wasted a few movements with the initial idea of trying to attack the knight with the rook and the queen and now we're being disheveled because we're constantly being what's the word now blocked but at the same time we're not developing our pieces so now we come and attack the knight so we're trying to we've already moved this bishop once and now we're moving the bishop again the knight can take the pawn i think visually i'm looking at trying to get this rook here to try and get the king through this mire of knights but we haven't developed any of these pieces yet and it's not really a strong position so the knight takes and the queen takes again moving the queen not developing any of these pieces it's not a strong position for the queen at all in any way shape they still have two pieces developed over our one and then the castle. So they're fairly safe and comfortable in their little area. So now we decide to bring the bishop out. Doesn't feel like a very nice position for it really. It's kind of blocking the open file that's really available for the rooks. So they come down and support the pawn which the queen could have nicely taken. The only issue with the queen if the queen had taken. Yeah, we would have fallen into this trap wouldn't we? So if we had come here, because the queen doesn't have any defence on it, the bishop could, could come here and attack the king. So at least we were a little bit awake to really realise that, well, we're not going to fall for them apples. So they do come and support the pawn, but really they didn't need to come and support the pawn because we would have been trapped if the queen had come and attacked it. So we develop the knight and we bring the rook across. So almost feel like we're 
being defense nanny yes to the plain eye it looks it doesn't look like there's anything major going on so now they're attacking our queen so they're winning a bit of tempo in terms of us having to move the queen and we're not being able to develop our pieces we're trying in our vainest attempts to see if we can get the rooks doubled up if we can and their bishop comes back so you think oh they're losing a little bit of time here what's going on what kind of strange bishop move is that is it just going to swing around is it attacking the bishop is it going to slow us down from actually getting a, getting the rooks in place so we get a little bit arty for ourselves here you see the problem They've got a 2 on one on the bishop because the queen can take. So now we're just basically flailing and just trying to make it look like, oh, well, we'll just take it off the board and we'll get it back. But positionally, we're not in good shape because they're owning the file with the queen. It's really crucial. So how does our rook get into the game to try and own the file? That's a big issue. So we come back down trying to see whether or not we can get the exchange off. They're plus one. Shouldn't really mean much of a difference. We have a knight, a flexible knight. We should be able to work it quite nicely. And they do actually capture, which was quite a shock. And then the rook comes now to attack. So in the eyes of the game of the answer to chess, you would think, well, this should be your bread and butter. Should be able to cope with this quite nicely. They're only a pawn up. We're behind our pawn with the rook. Our king's got space to actually come across and protect the pawn. Looking at the pawn majority, this pawn is split from the rest. And they've got pawn majority on this side. So you'd think, well, that if they play nicely, they'll probably get these pawns down and promote. So they do start charging down with the pawn, which, you know, that's to me, that's the right thing. And then they put a two on one on the pawn. And we go and attack the bishop and we start jumping with the knight now this type of game here really i shouldn't have probably traded down i think i should have been a little bit more patient with the development of my pieces um it might have been a bit of overconfidence in saying well these end games i can manage them but he does have an extra pawn and our king is a little bit backward and i feel a zugzwang coming on as soon as we're in this position, I'm thinking, we're going to get Zugzwand. Because if he gets this pawn pushed down a little bit further and his king's behind here, he's just going to do a side on and we're going to be finished. So he starts moving the king and we start pushing the pawns, realising that we have not done this the best. And Zugzwang, Zugzwang is inevitable, really. So at that point there, we, we resign the game because there's no there's no dice it's going to take it's going to have more pawns against my one my king is never going to be able to get around the bat to get these pawns in time so they'll be ramping home so a fairly good game but lots of things to pick up on um just to keep in the mental roller decks um for developing going forward in the later months of this year So that was that one and I'm not going to go through all of them but I'm just showing you the kind of psychology, the me mentality about doing proper reviews of your games and really being super critical about the movements that you made and what you could potentially do better in the future. So we're going to come and um, we're playing black here. So push through the center, knight comes up and defends and then the knight comes down, looks a bit odd, but it's coming down and just blasting through. So this is one of those very aggressive openings that can get you squished. So let's just take a step back. Let's take a step back from all of this. So this is normal. This is okay. The knight jumps down. He's got the protection from his bishop. We attack the knight. Is there anything else that we could have done differently? Do you think? Now, my brain is averse to bringing the knight here. It always is. It struggles with bringing the knight here, protecting. 
I think that would have been a better move, doing that move. Because then at least we have a piece that can take it back rather than the king. So moving the knight here, I'm assuming, is a better move. Because then if it does take, then the knight can take. He still does have all his armory ready to come and attack. You know, getting the bishop queen here and getting the bishop here type thing. Yeah, can't move that just yet, but we get time to bring our queen here. We can attack the queen. We can bring it here. That type of thing. So in my head, that was the better move. But in the games, my brain struggles with bringing the knight here. And the only reason why it struggles is bringing the knight here is because usually the bishop is the one taking the knight off the board. But the knight is blocking the passageway for that attack. So I think a simple knight move coming across here would have sufficed and would have given us a better start in this game. So we allowed the opponent to actually stun us with this move so then they come through attack with the bishop and we bring the knight across attacking the bishop feels okay i mean it's kind of stopping the queen from coming here for a brief moment bishop goes back and then we're attacking their bishop queen supporting the knight uh, bishop at the minute and this very gentle attack here on the knight dishevels the whole situation i think so it puts me on the back foot. And that's all because really, there was elements that could have been done quite easily. I could have just taken the pawn off the board. Simple as that, rather than attacking. So I sort my bed out first before going and attacking. Simple little things like that. When you break down your games afterwards, it really is a good revelation because you see how simple the movements that you could have made during the game really are. So those are the types of things that we could have done. Instead, we came through and attacked here and given the opponent the, the initiative with the pawns. And again, given the opponent the initiative with the pawns here. So we grabbed and we're attacking their bishop. And now we're looking to see if there's some sort of pressure we can put on the king here. There isn't any. <laughs> there isn't any. Yeah, because we can't take the poor bishop because the rook has got the x-ray through to the king. So all because we should have just taken the pawn here and brought ourselves through nicer. Yeah, now they've got a fork on here with the pawn. So there's a big situation going on, but they don't go for that. We take the bishop and they've still got the fork going on. So we created a problem for ourselves right from the very start just because we didn't bring our knight across to defend. Also, we didn't take the pawn. Little small maneuvers that would help enhance our games. These little tiny things are things that will can be brought in over the coming months with appropriate calculation, appropriate evaluation, sorry, of the calculations, the move orders, the strategies, the plans, really going into in depth into each of the games. Like I said, I'm more than halfway through i'm nearly finished now actually um doing the evaluations of these games and yeah it's been massive revelation but as you can see we're self-teaching ourselves on this the movements that potentially could have been done better and we're seeing them straight away it's not like we're having to search forever and ever to find the better moves we're seeing them instantly so it's um, going to be quite easy to make that transition into doing it actually in the game not going to be 100 percent proof obviously but it's going to be more improved as you're going through and as we said we we were 1885 but not doing this rating climb thing or anything like that in fact we're probably doing a rating reduction uh, the way we're going but this practice does help especially for fingers crossed the over the board games that we will be looking to play for the rest of the season so that's the whole focal point again true to my word the focal point is over the board play trying to improve the calculation the planning the strategies to help enhance my over the board game and um, see how we get on these games really do help the losses really do help um, i am putting it in i'm practicing my stuff and the players are doing what they need to do but 
the behind the scenes after the game is over that is where I'm really doing my learning and when there's a loss I like to just pull it apart and just find those simple moves that could have been done I'm creating a good balance of understanding my chess and my answer to chess and basically my own development of chess so we're going to jump in and play a few games um, We'll just sign off from this section first and then we'll, we'll come in and um, have another practice session. Okay, 10 minute game. See how we get on. Um, let's just bring the knight out. And this knight supporting. Let's develop the bishop. Castle. Let's attack this pawn in the centre. Let's grab. It's an interesting one. I'm going to develop the bishop. Get ready to move the knight back here. Need to make sure we give the king some company. And we don't need to move so fast, but if there's obvious moves to make. Bishop's coming here, yeah, as it says, coming here. So we'll just attack this. And let's move the knight. Yep. take with the queen let's not forget to bring the knight back in now this pawn is a little bit i just can say it's a little bit on its own so do we waste time bringing the queen here defending or do we push if we push he's got two pieces on there we've only got one which is the knight is there another disturbance of any kind Get the rook here, bishop can take the pawn because the pawn's not going to take. But are we too slow? Bring the rook here, he brings his bishop back because he's all got a two on one. We take the pawn and then we've got like knight with a two on one protection. Yeah, ish. Alright, I think we're going to go with that. Let's try it anyway and see. So the bishop moves, we take. But then it could always push down, couldn't it? Uh, it could always push down, and then we suppose we can push up, keeping the two on one thing with the rook and the knight. But we'll see what they're doing, because it looks like they're thinking now, and oh, they they've got it, they've got it sewn up. So the knight could jump here, but we're going to lose this pawn. So they actually saw that. That's the right, is it? So if we pushed. He's got one, two. We've only got one. If we brought the bishop here, then we've got like a two on one. And also then the queen is defending. It's just that his rook is going to be facing our queen, isn't it? If we attack the knight because it's got no protection on it. With the queen. Just to take it off of the line of this rook. So the queen comes and defends, takes itself off the bat so the rook can come and get in the game. I think this knight, this pawn's gonna fall, I think, you know. So the knight could come here now, attacking the queen. So if the because the knight is not gonna take the pawn, it'll take. Then our pawn can take. Which is protected by the pawn. So if we come here with the knight attacking the queen, it's also attacking the bishop, but the knight's gonna I'm hoping the take and then we can take the queen off the ball, but that's not gonna happen. Alright, so take with the pawn, smaller pieces on the higher piece. And that's about it, isn't it? He could go back with the knight, but I bet you he comes here with his so then his pawn is opposite. So it's not going to be happy blocking his rook, but he'll, he can't come out there. So I think he's going to come here with the knight, isn't he? Oh, he can also come here. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, he can come here. He's attacking two pawns then. Yeah, sorry. That's, that's the one. So how do we deal with that? It's attacking two pawns. Ooh. 
think they just missed out, aren't they? Is he coming here? Could attack the um, knight, but we lose this pawn because his queen will be there, won't it? Pawn takes, queen takes, queen takes the pawn. Rook, rook attacks the queen. Might be the move, might it? Small piece attacking high in. Uh, oh no, he doesn't have to take. He can always go back here, can't he? Yeah, so we can't attack their queen. We'll lose this pawn though if we did do that exchange. So if we attacked, then he comes here. Then we went and attacked the queen. The queen takes, pawn takes. There's nothing supporting that pawn, so we would lose the pawn. We would be on this pawn, though, wouldn't we, with the rook? No, maybe not. Shall we hang fire on that? I don't know if it looks juicy enough or not. Simple pawn push, just blocking down. That might be the one. What's the knight wanting to do? I don't want to do anything too fancy. It needs to be simple. I can't really. Bring the rook here, opposite their rook. Right, comes here, pawn takes. No, no, too fancy, dude. Smaller piece attacking, knight jumps here. Do we take? Maybe the knight just jumps back in again. Yeah. No, something's telling me to stay away from that. What do we have? What do we have? Queen's gonna get hit. Improve, 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 improve. It's not coming clear to me. Now I've got to put myself in the evaluation mode. Okay, let's say the game has finished now and I'm looking at it now and I'm wanting to put the eval bar on, but I can't. I'm saying, no, you've got to do it yourself. What would I see? And I would see it so simply in the evaluation. I'd go, oh, I would just do this. I think it's just that simple pawn push attack in the night. I don't think there's anything majorly wrong with it. Yeah, okay. I'm going to trust my instincts. I've been focused on that for the last five minutes. We know what is going to ha could happen, or if they take, whichever. Because we don't have to take, we can just go and support, maybe. Support with this pawn. Oh, we did say we'll potentially get attacked, didn't we? So we didn't throw that, we didn't throw that sort of combination together. All right, so that's a bit different because his knight is still under threat, but he can move it. So if we come here, because obviously this pawn can still take. Ooh, look what they're doing. If we go here, yeah, then this pawn can drop down as well. Onto the queen. And then the queen's only got one space to go, which is here, and the knight would be able to take it. <gasps> oh, so it looks like we've lost the pawn. Can't take here because there's no support. Can't go in here because the knight will take. Can't go there because the queen will take. So it looks like the queen, they've actually won the pawn. <gasps> oh, <laughs> the kiss of death. Oh no, well, okay. What's that? I'm gonna have to move and then he gets a free pawn. What's this going on here? No. Can you add him and eve it? Of course you can. Oh, definitely can't go here. Oh, that's very clever. Bang! 
hits me. Although, I can take because the pawn supporting. So if he does drop here, I can take because I've got the pawn supporting here. Unless I'm missing something else now. But I just saw that then I'm like thinking, oh well, that's the only thing I'm doing. Well, don't want to take any other chat. Oh. They're doing stuff I, I'm not expecting at all. So he's attacking the bishop, which has got protection, which is fine. It's got this whirlwind situation here. That's the magic, isn't it? Wow, look at that nice night fork. Wow, ha, 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 ha. Pawn can take. Then his bishop's going to move. Then we're going to have to support. And if we went here... Does his pawn drop? Oh, his pawn drops again, but we can go here this time. So let's move the rook. Magic. We're on 2 minutes and 31. Um, this is only a 10 minute game, you know, actually. It's got zero increment on. So they do take. So we're expecting the bishop to move so we can do this. And what else is there? So he does take the pawn. Queen's protecting this pawn at the moment, so I think we're going to have to do this. And then his pawn's going to probably come and hit us. Yeah, okay, let's take with the rook. Hit the queen. So he's going for the queen. Didn't think he would, but um, they have. Let's go here. Now he's coming for this with the rook, so I'm going to come here with the rook. No, he's got a two on one. Could go here. I think they're moving fast now because they, my time is running out. Let's get the knight in the game now. A troublesome knight. Let's get some forky business going, even a blocker. It's protecting the pawn at the minute. Don't like the position of my rook. I think it's going to get challenged. <laughs> but we shall see. One minute 50 something. Oh, what the days. Let's go for the blocker. Don't want to discuss that one too much. Rook sacrifice, nope. I don't think it's necessary at the moment. It's coming for the pawn, the queen is protecting the pawn. Knight can't go here. Let's get this rook out of here. Because I think they're looking they have to do with that. That's we can go. Hit this pawn. Then it's going to go, so what, you can, and then we hit there. But he's got a lovely diagonal towards our king, so you probably think his rook's coming. Oh, his bishop's coming there. Uh, simple exchange. We'll be down a pawn, though. And he's going to bring his rook into the game as well. <laughs> another, another knight blocker. Let's do another night blocker. It's getting very sketchy. I'm on one minute. I'm in bullet bullet mode. And I'm chit-chatting away like anything. These guys are just so good. So he's got two on there. Gonna have to bring the rook here defending. He might still capture this. Uh, this poor rook, I bet you, gets taken off the board. This rook right here. What's my knight got? Must be a magical fork coming. It's hitting this pawn. Let's take. I blocked my rook. Let's hit the rook. This is too much, it's too much. He must be getting... Oh, he's got like a two-on-one here. Bishop's taking. I could take that off the board, though, couldn't I? I can just take that off the board. Let's go for a check. Let's go for a check. 
not going to go for a draw, but what can you do? It's going to push something, it's going to go here. What is, what's he doing? Oh, we got a draw. Nice one. Yeah. Ugly game, but we talked it through. And let's have a look, see if there was any potential. I don't think there was. Um, my time was running out as well. I'm only on 50 seconds. I don't have time to dance around. And analysis without the tools. Please don't come on. Don't show me anything. No, 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 no. Evaluation off. 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 Get off. Let's have a look at the ending of that. One, two, 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 two. So we'll do it before the rook capture. Yeah, just maybe even before that. No, the rook capture was always going to happen. So, oh, sorry, the bishop capture was always going to happen. It's got a check on the king. We can't do anything because he's got a two on one on the knight as well. So happy with that. Let's just be happy with that. Right. So we get the check on, but do we need to do the check? We do have a knight. It would be against the rook. We do have a pass pawn. He does have a pass pawn. So if we had gone for this, he would have just taken the knight with the queen. So it's a good job that we didn't. Was there a fork that I missed at all? Knight attacking the uh, the rook. That would have been too slow, I think. Because it would have been coming down with checks on the king. Not that it's a big beef, big biff, but it's giving them the initiative. I'm fairly happy with what we did. I'm gonna stick on the evaluation and have a look. Uh from here, yeah, from here. Bet we're getting a kick in. Is it slowing? Is it slowly moving? It's not slowly moving, is it? It's showing a draw. Yeah. What, what is it suggesting? Queen C1 check. Oh, yeah, that's what we did. Oh, so it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Even the computer could only find a draw. Excellent. I'm happy. Yeah, that's really made my day.